So it came up on stream today, uh, while I was like streaming games on the Black Cat Show, brought to you by blackcatbooks.org. Uh, I am the owner and editor of blackcatbooks.org, Cody Lee, author of Rabbit Hole and Crew of Beautiful. And uh, Cyberpunk 2077 has been out for about, I want to say like seven months, uh, six or seven months. It's been half a year now. Uh, CD Projekt Red is uh, refusing to post sales numbers. Their uh, speculation estimates that they are, they've had massive losses. The online component has been canceled. Um, Spin-off media is declining in popularity. Like the toys didn't sell. Like um, th there's no real, there's no real indication that this game is a success. So I think it's, I think it's reasonable to spectate. Considering like the refunds and everything that's going on with this release, uh, just how broken it is, and just how it's not going to be fixed uh, ever, that this game is not only just a failure, like a bomb, but an entire ship sinking disaster. Like this is something that I feel has ruined CD Projekt Red as a brand, right? Because this is a game that I was, uh, I spent like. I, I spent, like, years of my life, right, being told by, like, people on message boards, like, on communities like Niche Gamer and, uh, you know, 4chan and stuff like that. Like, Cyberpunk 2077 was going to be not only one of the greatest games ever made, but, like, a thing that would, like, redefine video games as a concept, right? It would be such a, it would be such a well-rounded, well-crafted, well-executed RPG that, like, people would just, um completely never go back to like ordinary games ever again this was going to be a mind-blowing experience with a with a truly compelling like a you know three thousand hour long story with like endless customization options and <laughs> whatever people were trying to say oh it was going to do it was going to break boundaries it was it was going to do wild new exciting things and uh uh, the signs for me were there as early as when The Witcher Three came out. I was a uh, there actually are uh, I actually did release statements you know early on in my YouTube career like talking about like how I expected Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven to fail and I kind of wish those videos were still around so I could like post those and brag about how like how much foresight I had but um I I saw this coming a mile away because there were there were there was no indication that Cyberpunk 2077 was anything other than just a over-marketed dud, right? Like, um, the, the AAA problem, or the quadruple A problem, I think we need to say, for these kind of games, almost, because of just how high the budget are is and just how big the expectations are for this release, not only for the fans and the players, but the companies and the business people, right? Like, they were legit expecting this thing to sell, like, at least 15 million units. They were expecting it to, uh, to have an online mode with microtransactions that they could exploit for years and years on end. Right, uh, that was the plan to put out this compelling single-player game first, like hook people into this like tutorial thing, and then just be like, okay, and while we're working on the sequel for the next ten years, you can uh, continue giving us money through our microtransaction system uh, through this online mode. You know exactly like what GTA Five did. Yeah, uh, they were going to be this the next GTA Five. That was their goal. That was their plan. Uh, it's why they were so desperate to put this thing out. You know, because. You know, five years since The Witcher 3 with, like, nothing in between. And nobody's going to play, like, these Witcher card games or, like, these these spin-offs or anything like that. Nobody cares about that. Like, people just want the new AAA RPG experience. And uh, Cyberpunk was supposed to deliver that. It was supposed to BTFO Breath of the Wild. It was supposed to, like, destroy Nintendo once and for all. It was supposed to, like, be the, the generation-defining game for the PS4 and Xbox One. And the PC, I suppose. Uh, you know, a real... A relevant platform that it is but uh that, that didn't happen um this is the last i think the last of like a dying breed of of games that were like meant to like completely override like breath of the wild success because that was the thing like i always heard uh you know after breath of the wild first came out is it like oh just wait until just wait until red dead redemption 2 comes out that's going to be better than breath of the wild just wait until cyberpunk comes out and um, you know these big games from the biggest studios in the world. They're gonna they're gonna destroy your your little Zelda, and uh, you just wait till the Elder Scrolls Six. They're gonna destroy Zelda, and now those games are out. Uh, we we see we can see now uh, very very clearly that that simply isn't the case. 
<laughs> like, like um, to compare like Breath of the Wild to uh, you know one of the be- you know a true generation defining game to Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven is almost laughable. It, it really is. Uh, we're kind of at the point now where I think it's becoming indisputable that Nintendo is the best console manufacturer in the industry that produces the best games. Uh, the days of AAA Western developers just throwing a ton of money into a product, you know, throwing in Hollywood actors, throwing in these blitzy marketing campaigns, making up buzzwords, that's not going to do it. That's not going to cut it anymore. That That's not what... That's not what people are looking for. People are looking for things with actual substance. And unlike with Hollywood, where the entire system is corrupt and nothing quality gets made, with video games, we have reasonable alternatives. In this case, Nintendo, right? So, like, if you wanted a really good, um, you know, open world adventure game, like, just play Breath of the, let's just play Breath of the Wild, right? Like, wh- why wouldn't you? Like, uh, this idea that like it's for kids or it's immature or anything, it's uh, it's completely misguided, um, and completely wrong. First, uh, we're we're seeing more and more that these games that are intended for a easily milked and easily exploited adult audience simply aren't becoming successful. They aren't they aren't established they aren't establishing themselves properly like they have this idea this grand plan of making these uh, these multi-billion dollar sort of like endless streams of revenue that and they can't even like get the the initial launch release right and i, I i'm beginning to feel they never will like uh, that ship has sailed they're, they're never going to recover from this not only just with cyberpunk 2077 but with future releases uh when do you think cyber cd project red is going to ever put out a new game like are they going to put out a witcher 4 like you know after the series is kind of concluded and there's really nowhere for it to go like at that point people are going to feel that like they're just uh they're, they haven't done anything new, right? Like after Cyberpunk, when are they going to put out a new IP on the scale of this? I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if they'll ever be able to do it. I expect the company is going to sort of decline going forward. They're going to focus on like you know selling old games and like promoting their storefront. Uh, they're going to try and recuperate, but I, I don't think they can do it because uh, they have too many. They've hired too many bad people for Cyberpunk. They let go like their their real talent. Uh, there's there is no recovery from this. I feel like uh, they they can't possibly reco- They can't possibly salvage this train wreck that they've built for themselves, and and uh, that is a good thing. Um, CD Projekt Red really was the new tens equivalent of Bioware, a company that was similarly overrated and overhyped by a, a corrupt gaming media and an easily misled public. You know, an RPG series that wasn't that didn't ha- offer compelling choices or an interesting story or stunning gameplay. Like Witcher Three is a, was not that different in that regard. An extremely overrated game, right? Uh, and we're kind of at the point now where I honestly don't know what they're gonna try and promote next. Like things like Genshin Impact. Like, if it wasn't for the blitzy, like, marketing campaigns, nobody would talk about Genshin Impact. If, like, YouTubers weren't literally being paid to promote Genshin, Genshin Impact, nobody would be talking about that. Like, people are avoiding, like, applications like Amazon Luna, Google Stadia, Apple Arcade, like, the plague, right? Like, uh, uh, so many people are, like, complaining about, like, games from Hironobu Sakaguchi being Apple Arcade exclusive. Like, why don't just you just put it to Switch? Um, the days of like there being multiple gaming platforms, you know, you know, the Epic Game Store, the good old Game Store, like Xbox, PlayStation, they're over. Like what people want is for everything to be available on like a single service. Like in this case, like Nintendo and uh, Steam, I, I would say, or, or Xbox Game Pass. Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. It is something that really should have come out in Switch. Uh, if it did, it would have been more obvious just how low quality it actually is, and more people would have been willing to like criticize it and things like that. Uh, it would never, what, CD Projekt Red would never have become as overrated as they are, as they ha- as they were five years ago, if they had been competing with Zelda from the start, right? Um, I don't see any company sort of coming out of the woodwork and like 
building up their brand the way CD Projekt Red did? Like, who could possibly do it? Like, I, I could see, like, right now people are still trying to desperately pretend that, like, Hollow Knight is, like, somehow better than the Metroid games and, and things like that. Um, it, it's not going to last. It, it really isn't. Um, you know, these in, even the really good indie developers can't pump out, like, high-quality games the way Nintendo can, right? Like, you know, Nintendo's going to put out, like, you know, Nintendo put out, like, Samus Returns, and uh, Samus Returns the same year as Hollow Knight, and they'll have, like, probably have Metroid Prime 4, you know, probably within one or two years of Silk Song's release. And that's not, not even including, like, other Metroid-related things that they'll be putting out in the future, whereas Hollow Knight, I think, will just have those two things. And even though those two things are great, uh, if you're never getting more of it, like, wh why would you care, right? Like, um, th that's the future of the gaming industry. Like, um, Nintendo is going to, like take control of more and more genres, more and more companies, more and more like of the market share, and more and more companies like CD Projekt Red can't get away with their bullshit. Like they won't be able to like, to do this thing of like presenting themselves as the hot new item on the market. Their optimistic, extreme, like big goal for their game was 15 million units sold, right? Like within the first year or something like that. Um, something like that, um, you know, huge, huge numbers, insane shit. Animal Crossing New Horizons, a game that probably had, like, you know, in a thousandth of the budget, like, or perhaps even more, perhaps even less than that, um, sold twice that amount. You know, it was a way bigger success. And we'll continue to get spinoffs, uh, sequels, and, um, you know, a, new updates, free updates for the game. Uh, a far superior experience, in other words. This may seem like I'm, um, you know, why am I talking about this? Uh, because, like, if nothing else, uh, the gaming industry is getting better. Um, with uh, the decline of all these companies, the decline of all these, like, um, you know, these terrible hardware manufacturers, PlayStation, Xbox, you know, with the decline of these companies, we're seeing more and more that Nintendo is more than, more than capable of rising up and delivering, like, stellar experiences that are better than the things we were getting 10 years ago. Like, I remember when people said, you know, when Skyrim first came out, how Nintendo could never make something this good. And, you know, within a couple of years, they put out Breath of the Wild, which is better than in every possible way. Skyrim was never that, was never that special. I'm really looking forward to Nintendo's E3. Um, I just know that Cyberpunk 2077 uh, is not going to be relevant in the future, and I look forward to the future of Nintendo games. Not video games as a whole, because, you know, it's just going to be a lot of decline and despair and a lot of making shit up and making excuses, like CD Projekt Red has been doing. I'm looking forward to the future of Nintendo and what Nintendo will offer going forward.